there are three main techniques of, of crowd counting. The first is if you have a photograph of the event, you can just either by hand or using a piece of software count the number of people in the crowd. For example, with the uh, inauguration of, of Obama, using exactly the same picture, the government and the professor both uh, calculated an estimate of crowd numbers. The government came up with a figure of 1.8 million, while the professor came up with only 800,000. This is using exactly the same photograph and the same techniques. Moving crowds are much more difficult than static crowds. You can't just use photos um, in that case. So what you can do is you can set up a point on one of the main entrances or exits to a march, say, and just count the number of people who pass you. Um, this has problems too. What if people join after your, your checkpoint? What if people uh, leave before your checkpoint? You have no way of knowing just what portion of the crowd passed you. Another technique is after the event itself. You can ask people did you attend, say, for example, the royal wedding, um, and use that to work out what portion of the population were there. But this inevitably has problems as well. So for one thing, it's very difficult to get a representative sample. If you took a survey just in London two days after the event, people came from all over the country and all over the world. You're not going to capture those in your, in your sample. Now that we're moving into a time where everyone has smartphones, Twitter, unless you turn it off, it records exactly where you were when you sent a tweet. So if you can imagine in the Arab Spring of, of 2011, we can look at where these tweets were sent from on a typical day of protest during that time. Um, and as we zoom in, you can see that there's this big cluster around Tahrir Square. You can use this as a representative sample of the number of people who were there on that day. In 2010, at a German music festival, there was a crash in which 19 people died. So to prevent this kind of thing from happening, again, what researchers are doing at the moment is developing techniques using smartphones to try and uh, communicate between the crowd and police in sort of a real-time way. So there's an app that's been created that uh, was used first at the London Mayor Show in 2011, in which people who were attending the event could use the app to find toilets, to find um, places to buy water and so on. But uh, as they were using the app, it was sending information to the police about their location so that the police, having a map of the city and knowing where people were, could uh, predict where the potential crash points were going to be. Now, if uh, something happens where you predict a, a crash point is going to occur, the police can intervene before it actually happens and send messages to the people on the ground, to the people at the event, telling them to, to perhaps move to a different location.